All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, what are called Galerkin methods. <clears throat> and the basic idea behind Galerkin methods is that um, if you're trying to solve something like a differential equation, what we're going to do is to try to look for solutions which are linear combinations of um, some set of functions. Um, and, uh, and then try to ask, well, is there a, um, a choice, if you will, it's like of those coefficients in the expansion, it's like which uh, um, give you the best approximation um, you know, it's like a reasonable approximation of the solution of the differential equation. It's like in that space. Okay, so so Galerkin methods are used widely uh, for problems uh, which involve uh, finding some sort of unknown solution, uh, unknown function. So the known function uh, might, for example, be the solution of something like a differential equation or an integral equation, uh, something like this, right? So for example, solutions uh, of differential equations or integral equations. Okay, so uh, so we're going to start. It's like by looking at uh, a linear problem, um, and then uh, then we're going to specialize it to a specific case. Okay, so we're going to consider <coughs> the following. So this is the Galerkin method. All right. So suppose uh, that we have a problem in the following form. Okay, some linear operator L acting on U is equal to F. Okay, so L is a linear operator. F is a given function. And U is an unknown. It's a known function to be determined. It's like from the the linear equation. So, if you will, you can think of this as being something like the infinite dimensional analog of a x is equal to b. It's like where a is a matrix, uh, x is a vector, and and b is a vector, right? Um, so, how do we go about doing this? Um, so we're going to uh, introduce a set of uh, test functions, uh, okay. So we introduce a set of functions. Let's call them uh, u1 to un, okay. Then we're going to try to find u. It's like which is obtained by a linear combination of these, right? So we consider uh, u to be some linear combination uh, c j u j, where j goes from one to n. All right, and then uh, we substitute this back into the equation. All right, so we substitute into the equation star <coughs> and then we use the fact that this is a linear operator so l on u is equal to l 
acting on this sum from j equals 1 to n cj uj but that's equal to uh, the sum from j equals 1 to n of cj l uj is equal to f right so that's the equation you're trying to solve okay so usually that equation cannot be satisfied uh, exactly right so that equation is usually inconsistent Because uh, f uh, will will generally not lie in the span of these functions, right? Um, all right, this is a little bit like if, yeah, um, yeah, so, so, so that's what happens sometimes, okay? So you can ask, it's like, you know, what can you do instead? Uh, so if you can't exactly satisfy this relationship, maybe what you can do is to try to minimize the error uh, in so doing, right? So, um, so you want to find an approximate solution. Okay, so one way to do this is to look at the residual error, right, which is that you know you want to have LU is equal to F, uh, which is another way of saying that you want LU minus F is equal to zero, okay? So let's try to do that, LU minus F is equal to zero, it's like where LU is this combination. So you want to have the sum from J equals to 1 to N of CJ LUJ minus F, right, be equal to zero. Right? So you, that's what you would like to have. Okay? But in general, you can't do that. So what you can do instead is that you can look at the norm of this thing, and you can try to minimize this over uh, C1 to Cn. Okay? So that's the basic idea. It's like behind this approach is to try to minimize that error. Okay? So this is a question of best approximation. So this is a best approximation question, or best approximation problem, if you will. <coughs> and um, so this question of best approximation is uh, very easy uh, when you have an inner product space, because when you have an inner product space, uh, this best approximation problem can be solved. It's like true the idea of a orthogonal projection. Okay, so this is this easy to do uh, in an inner product space. Because uh, when you have an inner product space, uh, this notion of a orthogonal projection exists, right? <clears throat> okay. So, uh, so let's see how you go about doing this. So one very general way of constructing it like this is to essentially look at this uh, function which you get, right? So this residual is a function without the, uh, the norm around it. Right, so just this uh, LU minus F is, is in general, it's like a function. Uh, and you can think of looking at linear functionals, it's like acting on this function. So what a linear functional is, 
is something which takes a function and gives you <coughs> a, a scalar, right, with the property that it's linear with respect to addition of functions, okay? So I'm going to consider uh, a set of linear functionals. phi 1 to phi n, okay, and then what I want is to impose the condition that when phi 1 to n uh, is applied to this thing inside the norm, right, so the sum from j equals 1 to n cj, <coughs> cj L U J minus F, right, that that thing is equal to zero. Okay. All right. So let's think about that for a second, right? Um, so again, this is a linear functional. So the advantage is that you can take this and you can basically pull it into, um, into this uh, parentheses and in particular into the sum. So by linearity, What you have is that the sum from j equals 1 to n of cj this minus is equal to 0, and you want this to be true for i equals 1 to n, right? So this, of course, looks like a linear equation now, right? So you have some linear combination of these things. So again, if you recall, right, this is a linear functional acting on a function that gives you a, a number, right? So this is just some number multiplied by another number and is equal to, again, some number, right? Because the linear functional acts on uh, the right-hand side, okay? And so, so now you have a, a system of equations, if you will. It's like which the CJs, which are the coefficients, satisfy, okay? So, uh, so let's just sort of see this, right? So I can write this as uh, any, just a matrix vector equation, right? So I have uh, C1 to Cn, right, is equal to <coughs> this linear functional, 1 by to f all the way up to Then the coefficient matrix looks like uh, phi 1, uh, L, U, 1, okay, and phi n, L, U, 1, phi n, L, U, n. Right, you see there's an i and there's a j there, right? So there are two indices and that gives you this matrix here. So you have a relationship, a matrix vector, it's like, well, you just have a linear system of equations, right? For the C1s to Cn's, which you can then solve for in principle. Okay, all right. Um, so there are several things you can do with this. Uh, so you might ask, well, what are those, uh, what are possible choices of those linear functionals? So, uh, so examples of uh, phi ones or phi i's, right? So, one possibility is just pointwise evaluation. Okay, so uh, phi i acting on f could just be equal to f evaluated at some point, say x i. Right, so that's one possibility. <clears throat> okay, and if you use that as your linear functional, then you get what is called collocation. So this leads to what is called collocation. Okay, so what I mean by that, so, so let's try to be a little bit concrete for a second. Right, if you have L used to go to F and L turns out to be a differential operator, a linear differential operator, Right, then what 
and you chose the phi's it's like to be <clears throat> this pointwise evaluation then what you're basically saying is that I want to take some linear combination of the u1's to un's um, such that when I plug it into the differential equation the differential equation is satisfied pointwise at a set of n distinct points okay and and those uh, distinct points are say x1 to xn Okay, and this is what is called the collocation method for solving, uh, say, a differential equation numerically. Okay, so so that's that's a particular example. Uh, there are other examples where uh, the instead of pointwise evaluation, you could have something like. Um, let me sort of give you an example. <coughs> so another possibility is some sort of. Uh, L2 inner product uh, with a test function. So what I mean by that is that you could have phi i of another function f be equal say the integral <coughs> of um, f of x um, say ui of x dx over the domain of definition, right? Um, so obviously that's uh, still a linear functional, okay? And um, yeah, and you know, it's like, so that, that leads to, um, you know, it's like um, a, an alternative set of uh, Galerkian methods. So all these are called Galerkian methods. So all of these are called, uh, Galerkian methods. And the classical Galerkian method is something like this, right? Uh, and the classical <coughs> is uh, something like what one gets uh, with this L2 inner product as the test function, uh, with a test function as the linear functional. <clears throat> so let's just say star, right? Okay, so, um, so, all right, so if you had something like this, um, <clears throat> so usually it's like we write this uh, <clears throat> in terms of the inner product structure, right? So, so this I'm going to write as the inner product between um, <clears throat> ui and f, right? So, um, so what happens is that you have uh, j equals to one to n of cj um, L U J, and if we're going to apply this phi i to it, and say that this is equal to phi i of f, right? That's <coughs> basically what's happening, right? So, uh, and then if you have that as your inner product, and you use linearity, then this gives you that sum from j equals one to n of C J the inner product between um, <coughs> ui and luj is equal to uh, inner product between ui and f, okay? <coughs> right, and as before, it's like this uh, has the form of a, uh, a linear system. So this has the form of a linear system of equations. <clears throat> where sort of, you know, this ui, luj, right, <clears throat> are the entries of the matrix A. And uh, 
UI F are the entries. Uh, B, right? So if you have something like AX is equal to B, right? <coughs> All right, so um, so that's sort of the general setting that's like for these uh, Galerkian methods. And then um, what we'll talk about next is uh, how you can apply, it's like this idea of Galerkian methods, it's like to solve uh, the Dirichlet problem, which we had talked about before. Uh, which if you recall, it's like is sort of Laplace's equations with boundary conditions. All right, so let me just stop here for now.